Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and in today's video we will be discussing the ENFP and the ENTP's dark side. <laughs> I'm talking about how the ENFPs and the ENTPs experience introverted intuition. I'm talking about the role of the shadow function in our processing. And my belief is that the shadow function as, acts as the primary fuel in our decisions, in our interests, in our passions. Perhaps a better name for the shadow function, a less intimidating name, is the muse. The shadow function is our muse in the sense that we perceive it as this uncontrollable but fascinating entity. The muse can be another person, it can be a romantic partner, it can be a family sibling, it can be a friend, or it can be just an experience in life in itself. It can be the challenge the project ahead of you. It can be what you're working on. It can be a game you're playing. My key stance on the shadow function is that we always have to accept and acknowledge its impact on us without falling in its grips and without running away from it. The shadow function is necessary to give us power to move forward in life. But its grip, its influence can become negative if we submit to it and let ourselves be controlled by its rules and issues. Now it's important to recognize that for an ENFP or an ENTP, extroverted intuition is seen as this bright cluster of energy, this engine piloting us forward, this bouncing block allowing us to jump from place to place. And in this, it's important to recognize introverted intuition as this dark, invisible force that we know exists around us, but which influence threatens us, scares us, and makes us slightly uncomfortable. Introverted intuition is this big, looming black hole slowly moving towards us. At its best, introverted intuition gives us a sense of energy and trajectory because of its gravity. We can use it to orbit around it. We can use its mass to orbit around it, to bounce around it, to bounce outside of it, to dance around it. But as ENFPs and ENTPs, there is also a fear of being pinned down by it, by being held down by it, by being pulled back by it, by being forced down from it by being controlled and slowed down by it. At the root of much ENFP and ENTP fiction I find this fear of being trapped, this fear of being captive, this fear of being held back. And as an ENFP or an ENTP it's important to recognize this fear. We all have our fears, we all have things that scare us, we all have things that make us nervous. Now, just because it scares us doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. The influence of introverted intuition can be both negative and positive. And generally, to an ENFP, introverted intuition is also a kick, a surge of energy. It gives us this power to move and to do things we thought we couldn't do. Fear gives us this power, this energy, that we didn't know we had. Introverted intuition is both the muse and the big threat to extroverted intuitives. And if you are afraid of introverted intuition, it's worth to mention that introverted intuition is also slightly afraid of you. And it is this theme of fear and the thrill of being able to dance on top of fear that creates the dance, the important interplay between these two functions. The way you can understand this conceptually is that if introverted intuition is this dark hole slowly moving in a set trajectory forward, extroverted intuition is this dancer on top of it, always a little outside of it. Extroverted intuition is enriched by the system of introverted intuition and given creative direction by it, but it always stands as slightly outside of it. Okay, if this is the system, what is that outside of here? 
what is that outside of the system? What's that outside of this place? They extrovert intuitive is always focus on what's outside of this map. And in this, it is putting out food, fuel, for the introvert intuition, pulling it in different directions, telling it, here is where you should go, this is what you should check out, this is what you should investigate. These are the patterns I, as an explorer, as the extrovert intuitive, as the ENFP or ENTP, think is interesting to this system. And the ENFP and the ENTP take great thrill on being able to dance outside of this dark black hole, to be able to dance in its trajectory, to be able to use its force to be pulled forward into new places. And ENFP or an ENTP is always looking at introverted intuition, wondering what is going to happen next. What will introverted intuition predict will happen next? And so the ENFP and the ENTP look at the path it's headed in, and it tries to see outside of it. So it's headed there, or it's going there, or it's going there. It's always interested in the next step of the introverted intuitive. So there is a great pleasure in trying to outwit the introverted intuitive. There is a pleasure in trying to outsmart the system. There is a pleasure in trying to escape its grip. So in a way you could say that as an ENFP or as an ENTP you're always trying to make yourself slightly unattainable. Always one step ahead. There is a desire to be chased, but there is also a desire not to be caught. When the fear of being caught is too great, the ENFP or the ENTP may run away from it entirely, or place itself too far away from it. But there is also a risk of not taking the fear seriously, and letting yourself be caught, letting yourself be controlled. The goal of the dance between these two functions should always be balance. Counters and actions and counters and actions. If there is no counter, there can be no reaction. If there is no action, there can be no counter. If you try to run from the influence of introverted intuition, well, face that introverted intuition exists everywhere. If you run from one of it, or one part of it, you will always encounter others. And there is a chance here that you might spend the rest of your life running. If you let yourself be engulfed by it, there is also a chance that you will just become one of the kegs in this system. You will have no influence on where you are going in life or where you're going to be headed next. You will be at risk of being completely at the mercy of this black hole. So a key part of this dance is to maintain control and power and trust in yourself as you experience it. So, the primary thing to consider as an ENFP or an ENTP is First, introvert intuition is going to be slower than you are. It's not going to be able to keep up with you. If you move too fast, it will go out of your reach. The other thing is that introvert intuition is always going to be more linear than you. It will always appear to be headed slowly in a set direction where you will be headed in many different directions. And if you go too far off course, you may divert from it. There is a possibility here to dance around its edges quickly, but never so fast that you run away from it. To dance around its corner, but never so much that you go off course. And it is incidentally when we are able to do this that we gain full power, full energy, full motivation, full flow. Too far away from it and we lose the momentum of its gravity. We can't use it to pilot ourselves forward. We lose the ability to think as creatively as we could. We lose the ability to make the amount of connections that we would be able to if we had it. ENFPs and ENTPs may recognize the moments in their life when everything became possible. There was no system anymore. Everything was dismantled. And so, because everything was possible, nothing became possible. Suddenly you felt like everything just fit together into one big blur. Suddenly you couldn't see anything anymore because you could see everything. You might have learned that when everything becomes everything, everything also becomes nothing. 
And that is what happens when you go too far away from the black hole that is introverted intuition. You may have noticed that at some point you've lost control. At some point you got completely stuck. At one point you couldn't move anymore, you couldn't do anything anymore. Because you let yourself get sucked into this void of introverted intuition. But you might also recall moments in your life when everything moved so quickly and you were able to get forward in life and you were able to overcome past issues and you were able to do things you had never done before. And that was probably because of trusting the influence of introverted intuition. And at the end of it all, all of this comes down to our trust in introverted intuition. As ENFPs, as ENTPs, how much do you trust in yourself? How much do you assert yourself in your own needs and your own path? Do you let yourself run your own path? Do you let yourself make your own decisions? Do you let yourself dance around these edges? This question will tell you how dominant you are as a person, how assertive you are as a per person, how confident you are as a person. And if you're not confident enough, you'll want to find ways to become more confident. A good way to think about it that I've learned is that the shadow function represents the level of difficulty at which we play our life. Introvert intuition adds this challenging element. It sets our difficulty level. It shows us what we have yet to learn, what we don't yet know, what we don't yet understand. It shows us what we lack clarity about. And when encountered with introverted intuition, it's worth noting what difficulty level it's at. How easy is it for you to keep up with its flow? How natural is it for you to move along with it? How able are you to predict its moves? And the thing here is that it should neither be too easy nor too difficult. If it's too easy, I don't think we learn anything. If it's too difficult, I don't think we learn anything. So in dealing with introvert intuition as an ENFP or an ENTP, learn to note down its difficulty level. Learn to note how inviting it is. Learn to note how easy it is for you to surf along its edges. If it's too difficult, find ways to make it easier. If it's too easy, find ways to make it more difficult. Balance, I've found, is not staticity. It's not when everything molds together and becomes one. But it is much more like in Taoism. Those two wheels spinning around each other, white and black. Spinning around together and forming oneness together, but without losing its independence. To everyone who looks at you, you two should look like one singular entity dancing together as one. But to yourself, you should look like your own person, and they should look like their own person. There should both be the singular version of you and the plural version of you formed together in this dance. Now as I end this video, also consider the choreography of this dance. Consider where the black hole is headed and if you like the direction. Consider how you want to alter its trajectory, where you want to lure it. Consider where you want it to go and consider where it wants to go. Consider what the map represents and what it can teach you and what you want to learn. Don't compromise your path in life and where you want to go and don't let it force you in a direction you don't want. That is my ending remark. Thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.